On one of our recent trips, we found ourselves on the Bourbon Trail in Kentucky, and it spans quite a long way. Here's a map if you're not familiar with it. And along this trail, there are a lot of places to stay. We were looking for something unique, something unlike anything we'd stayed in before, which is a tall order considering how many B&Bs we've stayed in just this year. But we found it. It's in Springfield, Kentucky, and it's called the Wildflower Ranch Inn. It just opened in December 2019, and it's owned by Carol and Rich, both artists from California. They both spent over 30 years working in the art industry, creating beautiful landscape paintings, curating art collections, and teaching workshops on the West Coast. But they decided to trade the crashing waves of the Pacific for the rolling hills of Kentucky. They open Wildflower as a sort of haven for artists on the Bourbon Trail. It's a place where people can come and appreciate art, but they'll soon be offering workshops and retreats for artists of various mediums. We're artists in our own right, so when we walked into Wildflower, we were hit with that creative energy. Every room is different, but they're all filled with art from Carol and Rich's personal collections and art they've created themselves. Some is more whimsical and fun. Other rooms feel like you're walking into an art gallery. The suites are no exception. Upstairs, they have three. The Tiger Lily Suite has a beautiful view of the in-ground pool and those stunning rolling hills. Tiger Lily also has its own private ensuite bathroom to complete that peaceful, sweet experience. Giant Sunflower is the largest second floor room and it overlooks the front entrance with that beautiful sugar maple. It has a comfy couch and reading chair and a king size bed. Giant Sunflower's bathroom is in the hall just outside the room and is shared with Wild Rose, which is a fun Western themed room. The centerpiece of the room is a George Hero photograph of Jane Russell over the fireplace. And the beautiful north facing windows give you a view of that pool. And you have western facing windows, perfect for checking out those Kentucky sunsets. Our room was actually on the first floor. It's called Blackberry Blossom, and it brings the wow factor, y'all. The room is the size of some houses with a bathroom to match. It's fairy tale inspired with a fireplace, spa tub, steam room with multi head shower a stunning king-sized canopy bed, and an indoor and outdoor seating area. We were living in the lap of luxury with that bed, bathroom, and the two huge walk-in closets. If you're coming to the Bourbon Trail for a romantic getaway, this is the spot for you. No matter which room you choose, you'll enjoy a delicious breakfast. Make sure to tell Rich and Carol of any of your dietary restrictions or aversions, because they want to accommodate your needs. Just out back beside the pool is a work in progress. It's called the Art Distillery. The Art Distillery is the name of our art studio, and it's where the Art Center events will be happening. The things that we do here are teaching art classes. We're gonna bring in teachers, instructors from outside of the region that are very popular uh, nationally and, and even some regionally to be able to have uh, art workshops with 10 or 12 or 15 people. And those workshops will be here, um, you know, as soon as the pandemic's over, but they'll be here uh, periodically throughout the year. And what we have been doing in Carmel will be similar to what we're doing here. And that is, um, these workshops will last about three days long. And what's great about this facility is that you know, we own the home and we're going to be here. We've got uh, really beautiful places to paint around, just around the house. But in the region, there's many opportunities for new landscapes from where we were in, in Carmel. Rich creates beautiful paintings that showcase how light and shadows play on real landscapes. Um, this is a Big Sur scene that I'm doing. It's 40 inches wide and uh, I started it in Carmel and then I'm working on the final finessing touches here. In his workshops, he takes people out to find great snapshots of nature to capture. And he's passionate about teaching them that less is more when it comes to bringing supplies. There's a tripod holder here, so this could just click right onto a tripod. And then this opens up and you've got all your paint here and this is where you put your paint. Um, well, let me get a, and as this is sitting on the palette, this is my palette with my paint. I just, everything's all self-contained. Then when I'm done, this comes out, this closes up, throw this in my backpack. I have a small tripod that goes into my backpack. And 
I can just walk up to the fields and have everything very, very portable. Carol's work is much more in-depth and complicated because she actually created her own artistic process. So in order to not botch her incredible art, we're going to let her explain it all to you. When I was growing up um, in Ohio, I was really into going out in the woods and picking up um, just leaves and rocks and looking at the plants and the backlit light was something I was very much taken with. Mm -hmm. And my um, process that I developed in college was to utilize the actual subject to create a light sensitive image. Mm -hmm. And that sounds really strange, but it's called cameraless photography and it creates a one of a kind photograph. So for well over 30 years, I worked with a particular medium that's no longer made but I thought I would pull out some images that represent that work. So this is actually made by projecting through the lily, in this case, onto a Swiss photo paper called Cibachrom. And Cibachrom was used to print slides or transparencies. A slide is what we call a positive piece of film. It's not a negative, it's positive. So this paper was used to make a print from a positive piece of film. And when I was in college, in art school, I decided to throw away the film and work directly on the paper. So it took a lot of trial and error because it's an experimental process. Mm -hmm. But eventually I was able to really get the effect of what I was after and that was the form and the light that defines the form and also the translucence and then the kind of rich colors that ordinarily you can't see with a camera when you're photographing light bouncing off of a flower. Mm -hmm. In the dark room, using the light source and a chamber where the object actually is held, there's a lens that focuses the light onto the paper. And focusing, you have the opportunity to distance the subject from the paper and create the enlargement of scale. It would take me uh, probably half a day to test and get the exposure right. And then the actual exposure, once I had made the determination of what that would be would be up to from 30 seconds to five minutes because you're actually photographing through a subject and if it's thin it would go fast and if it's heavier it would take longer mm -hmm. um, then once it's on the paper and you're in the pitch black dark mm -hmm. it has to go through a process that takes about 40 minutes to make it light safe of development bleaching, fixing, and then finishing. And then you have this one of a kind photograph. This is actually the precursor to the work that I do today. This is actually a branch with flowers lying on the paper. So this isn't light passing through the subject. This is a shadow of the actual subject being left on the paper. And this just, this is going down the rabbit hole because our eyes can't see it, but on a nice sunny day when you're outside walking around, everything that surrounds you is casting a shadow of color all around you. We just aren't in tune with it. But when you have it, it in the dark room and you have a single light source and actually this paper is sensitive to all ranges of light, then it's able to capture what we're surrounded with all the time. Here's the thing that was life-changing. Because they quit making color film 12 years ago, they quit making this paper that I use from Switzerland which was the only paper that I could do this process on. 
So those 30 years that I had fun playing with this and selling it through dozens of galleries and that was my life's work, went away in two years time. I went back with a process from the 1840s. And in the 1840s, when they were racing to create the art or the science of photography at that time, uh, there was a man named Sir, Sir John Herschel, and he was a British uh, scientist that was mixing chemistry, and he was racing with another Frenchman uh, or two to figure out how to capture use light to capture an image on paper. He discovered in mixing two chemicals um, that he could capture a blue image in a, a cyanide type based chemistry. And he wasn't very interested in becoming an artist, but he was a scientist interested in making a photo process. So he didn't work much in it. But a family friend of his, her name was Anna Atkins, picked that process up in the 1840s. And she became the one, she was female, um, she became the one to spend decades capturing plant forms on this cyan process paper in January. Kentucky groundwater, the same thing that makes our bourbon so good, drips out of these rock ledges and they form these icicles. And I'm doing a series on frozen Kentucky water, groundwater. And <laughs> yes, so these are the very first pieces, but this is actual ice melting on the paper gives you almost like an electrical charge. Um, is it okay? Can you take it? Yeah. Okay. Oh, sure. Okay. But this is very old paper. This paper is probably well over 100 years old. I'm very interested in feminism as an art subject. Mm -hmm. And um, as I went into the cyanotype work, I, in honor of my maternal grandmother, who was a quilter, I started cyanotyping on fabric. And I had an exhibition at the Monterey Art Museum and one in Phoenix at another location of this work. And these have been exhibited there. But I thought it would be kind of fun, since we're talking about the different substrates that light can be captured on for you to see what a fabric uh, piece looks like. Yeah. So I sewed this, these three banners. One of them was called Rose Breaking the Glass Ceiling. So you walk that way. And I'll show you <laughs> these big pieces were hanging in two different museums shows in the last two years. So objects are also being cyanotyped here. Our time at Wildflower Ranch Inn was unique in every aspect. The property itself is stunning. It's nestled in what I can only describe as a quintessential Kentucky landscape. Rolling hills of green grass and hay bales. It's so peaceful. Both her, all my aunts, um, my grandmother and my great-grandmother were all school teachers in Kentucky. And my grandma went to her teaching assignment on horseback to the middle of nowhere, wow. Kentucky. And that's where she met my grandfather. Um, but I do have a portrait that I'd love to share with you inside of my great-grandmother. And she's in the china cabinet. Oh, cool. okay. <laughs> the inside feels like a B and B in an art museum came together to create the perfect combo. It feels creative and upscale and well thought out. 
Carol and Rich clearly have a passion for art that they want to share with their guests. And Carol's art isn't just visual, it's also edible. She recently started a business called The Bourbon Tart, where she makes beautiful scratch-made seasonal tarts. Just another way to share her creativity with the world. Thank you so much, Carol and Rich, for allowing us to come in and experience your one-of-a-kind property. It's a special place made for special people and events. We have no doubt that you'll be flooded with people coming to enhance their creativity. If you want to see more videos like this, subscribe. It doesn't cost you nothing to hit that button, y'all.